Today we're looking at the outcome of the French and Indian War. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. So at the conclusion of the French and Indian War, which pitted old enemies France and Britain against one another for control of the North American continent, the British had clearly won. And if you want to find out what happened during the war, see my other video that gives kind of a brief description or brief summary of the war. But toward the end of the war, Spain had come in on the side of France. And so when the peace negotiations began in Paris in the fall of 1762, all three European superpowers, Britain, France, and Spain, had a seat at the negotiating table. In what became known as the Treaty of Paris of 1763, and of course keep note of that because there will be another Treaty of Paris 20 years later in 1783 that will end the American Revolution, but in this treaty to end the Seven Years' War and the French and Indian War, the French would lose virtually all of their lands in North America. The French gave up all of their land between the Appalachian Mountains to the Mississippi River, going all the way up into Canada. They were allowed to keep a, a few small islands in the Gulf of St. Lawrence and some islands in the Caribbean. In the treaty, Spain was able to acquire more land, basically taking control of all of the land west of the Mississippi River, including taking control of the port at New Orleans. In exchange, the Spanish gave up Florida to the British. The British, who were of course the victors in the war, gained basically all of New France, plus Florida. The British territory in North America now stretched all the way from Canada down to the Gulf of Mexico and all the way from the Atlantic coast to the west to the Mississippi River. The initial treaty was signed on November 3rd of 1762, but did not go into effect until February 10th of 1763. Now, English colonists were eager to move west into newly acquired lands and, and start building homes and communities. However, Native Americans living in the region who had a good, they had, had a good relationship with the French did not like the British who were now moving in and taking land. In May of 1763, Chief Pontiac of the Ottawa tribe began to organize attacks against British-held forts. Virtually every tribe from the Great Lakes all the way to the Gulf of Mexico united in trying to push the British out. Pontiac's rebellion, or Pontiac's war, basically was a plan for each tribe to attack the nearest fort to them and then capture the fort, take any weapons inside, and then all the tribes would unite to force the British back. Pontiac led a siege against Fort Detroit. Other forts, such as Fort Pitt at present-day Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Fort Niagara were also attacked. These large forts were able to hold out and were never captured, but smaller forts were captured and several frontier settlements were destroyed. The British sent troops in to combat the Native American attacks, and they were able to defeat the Delaware and Shawnee tribes and basically force them to surrender, which seriously weakened Pontiac's support. Hostilities remained high on the frontier, but after tribes further to the west refused to join in, in Pontiac's rebellion, and Pontiac saw no sign from the French possibly coming to his aid, he did sign a treaty with the British basically bringing the rebellion to an end. Pontiac's war is extremely significant because it convinced the British that defending this vast new territory was going to be very costly. And remember, the British had just borrowed a bunch of money in order to fight the French and Indian War. In fact, the war had doubled Britain's national debt to over 140 million pounds. That's over 29 trillion pounds today. So the British were not willing to spend any more money to defend the colonists on the frontier. So the British made a proclamation known as the Proclamation of 1763 that basically prohibited or stopped any colonists from moving west of an imaginary line that went along the crest of the Appalachian Mountains. Furthermore, any colonists already living west of that line would have to move back to the east closer to the Atlantic Ocean. Now colonists who had already built homes in, in this territory were being forced by the British government to move back. Now place yourself in the shoes of the American colonists. Here they had just aided in fighting this war to win this territory, and now they were being told they could not even go there. And to say the least, the colonists were not happy. In addition, thinking back to that huge debt from the war, you can probably guess what is coming next. The British were going to start imposing new taxes on the colonists to pay for that debt. 
To the British, they argued that, you know, they had spent all this money to protect the interests and the safety of the American colonists, so the colonists should pay their share of the taxes to repay that debt. But as we'll find out, the American colonists, of course, did not see things that way and, of course, begin to resist. And this, of course, will lead us towards a revolution. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.